So uh, I'm Chris Converse. I'm from a company called Codified Design Studio, which is just uh, located outside Philadelphia. So we are a graphic design company. We do animation, multimedia work. We do HTML and CSS and graphic design. So our niche is we are designers who are formally trained in design, but we actually do HTML and CSS, um, which is shocking, I think, to developers a little bit. Um, we kind of draw the line at anything database. As soon as there's an outer join, I'm out. I am just out. Um, and so what we do is we kind of partner with companies, tech companies. We do a lot of work with Chariot Solutions, for example, and other companies where we will make sure the design works across all the different mediums. The experience looks great. The animation looks good. Colors are on brand. And uh, you know, just sort of take care of that uh, front end piece. And so I put a website together for what I'm going to talk about today at codifiedesign.com slash go slash ETE. On this site is a whole bunch of code snippets and resources of the things I'm going to be talking about today. So I prepared way too much material. So I figure I'll just fly through it super fast so you can't understand anything I'm talking about today. Then you can go back to this website and uh, take a look at all the different code. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, just throw up your hands. I'll stop and answer. We'll do that a little bit. If it gets to be too many, I can answer questions after the session. And underneath is all the places that you can stalk me online. Um, friend me on Facebook. My mom really gets impressed if I have a lot of friends on uh, Facebook. So the website that this will link you to is uh, right here. So this is on our site. And again, there's just tons of examples and code snippets of all the things I'm going to talk about today. And what the goal of the talk is today is I want to show you all the things that we can do on the iPad to create web applications. There's an incredible amount of capability that Apple built into iOS, starting with the original iPhone, where you can take a web page and with a couple lines of HTML code in the top, you can tell the device that this web page is web able or web capable. And so what that means is when you say save to home screen and you put a few lines of HTML code in your page, what you get on the home screen is an instance of mobile Safari. So Apple basically gives you a way to run Safari headless. And as long as you do things like load content through Ajax, you can stay within your own environment. So you get all of the benefits of mobile Safari but without all of the extra Chrome. And you get an icon on the desktop. And so there are companies who have been really capitalizing on this. One of the biggest examples is the Financial Times, based out of the UK. They decided not to do a native app for all of the different platforms and go through the stores like BlackBerry, um, Google Play, and Apple Store. They decided to do a web application, do things like manage local storage, download content for offline reading, and enable the entire user experience with JavaScript and HTML and CSS. So I'll show you examples of some of that as well. And then I just want to show you like, what the process looks like for starting to take this. Then I'm going to end the session with, I have an Android device where I'm going to take a web app where I only was concerned about building everything for the Apple iOS. And I'm going to run the exact same experience on the Android and show you that 90% of what I did works on the Android device as well. And then, so what I'm hoping to inspire you with is all of the things we can do with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to build these interactive experiences on all of these devices. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the end as well on taking that same experience and then packing, packaging it up with tools like PhoneGap, which will allow you to create native applications based on all the content that you've built. So that's my goal uh, for today. Um, so first I want to go over to an iPad simulator here. And so I will try to zoom up here a couple of times. So we have a website on our uh, website called iPad.CodifyDesign.com where you can see a bunch of examples. And so what I first want to show you is what the experiences you can create when somebody gets to a web page that can be web applicable to your device. So we'll take the uh, first example here. So this is a, an example we did for Coldwell Banker. So what I'm going to do here is just a plain old web page. I'm going to tap on a link that will say go to a download page. This is running from a plain old Apache server. can run from any server. And what we've done with JavaScript is detected whether you're on an iPad or not. And we can do that very simply by querying the navigator, doing a string check. And then if you're on an iPad, we bring up this little animation on this screen. And we just sort of prompt you and say, hey, please add this to your home screen. So we come up here to our action button on the iOS. We tap on this. 
let's swipe over. Come on. Let's relaunch that. I'm running the simulator at uh, too small of a size here. So let me swipe over, there we go. So when I swipe over, I can do add to home screen. On an actual iPad, the add to home screen will be in the center of that pop-up box in the action. So now I simply tap on this and I say, I wanna add this to my home screen. In the HTML, I'll show you in a few minutes, we have a, a link tag that will point to a specific icon file. So you can pre-design your icon file. This was for Caldwell Banker. And I'm gonna tap add. So then what the iPad does is it takes that URL, wraps the link in an instance of mobile Safari, and then puts it on the desktop, and it looks like any other application. Now if I go in here and run this, I'm gonna tap on the Coldwell Banker application, it'll go out to my server, pull in all of the content, and then render all of this content right in the page. The only thing I can't get rid of is the very top 20 pixels at the top, which is part of the uh, iOS. Now if I rotate the device, we can see the content will sort of animate and move around. This is done through CSS3 transitions, which I'll also uh, walk you through. But there's a bunch of other things we can start to do here as well. If I come down here and just tap on the individual links, I can go to About Us, for example, where we can get information about uh, this particular person. And I can tap on Listings. The iPad, uh, since iOS 4, gave you the ability to create what's called subscrolling. So now there's two ways we can invoke subscrolling. We can do it through CSS with iOS 5 or later, or we can use a plugin. Um, the one that I'm using here is called iScroll, and I'm gonna show you the examples of when to use iScroll or any other scrolling plugin versus doing something native with CSS. I'm gonna tap on one of these items, go into the listing feature here. So now inside of the listings, I can tap and swipe on photographs. I have a little dot indication here showing me um, individual pictures I'm looking at. I'm also gonna tap on view map. I've inserted Google's mobile touch map, so we're incorporating web services into our application as well. And so I can come in here and tap and pinch on the map. I can move it around. I can grab this little guy here and invoke street view, anywhere that we have street view on the map. Zoom out. And so I'll, again, I'll do this a little bit later as well. And then I can return back to property listings, which will bring me back to that original page. So as I go through uh, more examples, I'll hook up the iPad in a second. Uh, tons and tons of user experiences can be created with all of these pieces. So what we're using here are JavaScript touch and end events. The iPad will automatically track where your finger is and what the X, Y, delta is from the touch begin and touch end. And then we can start to manipulate content with JavaScript and with um, CSS to make some of these experiences work. So I'm going to hop over to the, an actual iPad device here for a second and just show you a few more capabilities here. Record going? All right. So on the device here, I have a bunch of different um, demonstrations, so I'll just pop through some of these. So on the actual device here, instead of looking at um, this individual piece here, oh, I have an internet connection. Um, we can see the, the uh, overall speed of that. You know what, I need to ditch out of this because that's not connected. Sorry about that. Um, I'll get the uh, iPad connected in a moment here. Um, so all of these different screens here, I was just gonna go a little bit more into the Coldwell Banker. So what this application was for was they wanted a way to share newsletters with all of the different um, real estate brokers in the Utah Valley. And so they looked at having different apps and maybe doing something in the different app stores. Um, but Coldwell Banker had um, decided to do iPads for all of the sales force. So then they were looking for ways that they could just use iPads and use their current website to create content. So in the content management system, they can go in and add information for each newsletter. The iPad home screen here, every time you launch it, will just go back to the web server, get the latest edition, which is really just a URL resolved from the CMS, and then feed them back that individual newsletter. So that this is the way that they share 
um, locations. They share um, different properties that are up for sale and uh, so forth on their website. Um, Financial Times, this is the one I was mentioning before. So the Financial Times, which is ft.com, if you hit that with your iPad, they will prompt you very much like we showed before on how you can add this to your home screen and then get this same user experience running inside of this environment. And so Financial Times has done an incredible amount of work creating a user experience that works very much like a native application. If you tap on the screen and swipe, you can swipe between different complete sections of the Financial Times newsletter. If you tap on the lower left-hand corner down here under sections, this will bring up all of the different sections that you can tap and swipe. Again, all of this being generated through JavaScript. You can tap on individual pieces like letters and leadership, for example, and then go into individual stories and start reading individual content, complete with multimedia stories and all of that content. On the website I gave you earlier, there's a link to a website called labs.ft.com. The Financial Times company who runs this creates a lab environment where they share all of their stories and secrets on how they put this content together. They share all kinds of things on how different touch devices work, doing local storage, how they write their JavaScript. They use object style JavaScript where they create one object piece and then define functions inside of there, load them as separate files and then target. So they'll do like app dot function name equals and then they'll do all that kind of stuff. This really kind of started to change the way we wrote some of our JavaScript, just looking at how they were doing that. And they were just giving tons of this stuff for free, just letting you know how all that stuff worked. Um, so there's a link to that on the, uh, the website that I gave you guys earlier. And lastly, as another example, I just want to show, um, you can also start to uh, prototype uh, different ideas as well. So um, one of the prototype pieces we put together was something for a digital doctor office. So pretending for a moment that you walk into a doctor office and when you go up to the registration desk, imagine that they hand you an iPad. Wouldn't that be awesome? So you go and you sit in the waiting room and you've got an iPad there. This iPad is connected to the server in the back because not only do they give you iPads, but they have their own web server, right? We're, we're, we're reaching here, but let's say you, you wanted to um, come up with this idea. So the idea here would be um, you get this and maybe you want to learn about the, the staff so you could tap on you know, the staff and this has all of the staff information complete with the sub scrolling. You could learn about community events that are coming up in your area, flu shots and so forth. Or imagine this, you can come down and tap and you can change your information. You can change your provider information, um, update names, number of people in your family, do all of this stuff from this iPad that you're sitting in the doctor's office with. So it's one thing to talk about, wouldn't that be awesome? The other thing that's really interesting here is we can build this prototype pretty quickly, you know, in a week or two, and then you can use this to sell the ideas of the apps you want to build. So a lot of times people will come to us and have us build what an app might look like on an iPad or a phone, and we'll just mock this up in HTML, which is much faster than writing real apps, like uh, you know Steve does back there, but give people the idea on what would actually happen, how this user experience would work, and then use this as the template to build out the native applications as well. So that's another sort of thing that people will uh, come to us and uh, have us uh, work on for them. And so again, all of these pieces are just being put together because the iPad is recognizing uh, different pieces that we're putting in here. So I want to show you what some of the uh, pieces look like for putting this stuff together. So I'll quickly first jump to the web app capabilities piece. So in here, basically what we have is with just a few lines of HTML, you can enable a web application for the iPad. And what, when you do this, what you're telling the iPad is when you add to home screen, the iPad's going to go check the web server and see if you have all of these tags in here and if it can find some of these resources. And there are very few resources that we have to look for. So the first one here we have is the Apple Mobile Web App Capable. We're setting this to yes. Basically what this is telling the iOS device is this is web app capable, we want you to save it to the home screen, and what Apple will do is when you tap on that icon on the home screen, it will attempt to load the content within that little instance of mobile Safari. If for some reason your content that you're loading is not through Ajax, but you are just linking to a website, what the iOS will do is it will ditch out of your app and just switch back over to the actual web browser itself. Um, so there's no, no harm, no foul. It basically just says if we're not sort of loading content in there, it'll just ditch out and go back over to mobile Safari. And we'll talk about Ajax loading the content in your page. 
you have a few choices on how you can style the app bar. The app bar has normal, which you don't specify at all, or you can come in here and say, I want to use a black navigation bar across the top. So it'll either be the gray with the colored icons for AT&T or Verizon or whatever's at the top, the green um, symbol for the battery, or if you say black, you'll just get a black and white design at the top, which, you know, cool designers, we always want to choose black because it's cool. Um, so you can come in here and just define the uh, app status bar. And the other one, which was my other favorite one, because being a designer, I get really kind of picky about Apple putting that little highlighted symbol or shape on my icons, you know, to make it look all glossy and gel-like. Um, so we can come in here and you can say Apple Touch Icon dash precomposed. And with the precomposed flag on your link, you can point to an icon where you have designed the icon and you don't want to have the highlight show up on top of there. Seems like a tiny little thing. This makes designers incredibly happy. So anything that's in that icon shape will just become the icon. You'll get the rounded corners, but not that sort of highlight. And so with all of these pieces, you'll notice here, we're specifying specific assets. So once you say web app capable at the top, and then you give it a few other parameters, if you don't pick this, Apple will just make one on the fly. Just take a picture of whatever your website looks like and stick it in there. And you can also specify things called startup screens. So if I come down to startup screens, down here I can see I'm on assets, images. So these are also link tags as well. So asset image startup screen portrait. I'm gonna show you what these uh, dimensions are in a moment. And the other piece I wanna point here is media. So in addition to the startup screens we're bringing in, you can also put media queries, CSS3 based media queries inside of these parameters. So if somebody's on a retina enabled iPad, they will see higher res graphics than a standard iPad. You can set the relationship here. This is the key 